Hey everybody, welcome back to more PN03 for the Hard Games thread. I'm still Nigroth, obviously. Uh, and I'm still Haberman. He has come back because this is just the best game ever. Because I needed to see some more of this. Yeah. I didn't get my fix, I didn't get my fill. There, He was on pins and needles after dealing with so many other great plots. You could say I was on PNs and needles. Huh? Huh? Exactly. Huh? Well, it's it's better than some people trying to make this a pun of piano. Really? Yeah. That's a fucking stretch. Yeah, like they're. What is this? Piano three? It's like. <laughs> yeah. Internet guy, you're great. Good job on that room, by the way. Yeah, I just, just to re-congratulate you. Well, I think if this game had chivos, uh, they would probably put one in to die in that room. Just so no one can get it. Find a way. But it, on a completely side note that you would probably find amusing, there was actually uh, there was an achievement in Frontlines that was just get killed five times or commit suicide five times. And it gave... There's some games that have that. There's some other games that have achievements centered around death, and I always just sort of raise my eyebrow to that. Like, okay. Well, I remember that one specifically because I gave you zero achievement points. The developer just put it in to say, well, like, you're awful at this game. <laughs> but yeah, I guess I, guess, I, guess I should... Uh, we, we got a brand new suit. This is basically the third level average suit, even though, in all honesty, it is probably the best suit in the game. It has full auto. It has actually pretty good energy drive, such as the... No, well, it has normal invent the, the normal Tingu, but it does have the super powered up uh, homing laser, which is named after a bird I can't remember. But it, the crow laser. Yeah, or the probably the falconarium. Or but you know what? That suit being pure white, and now we're back in a pure white level, pretty much, more or less, kind of, sort of, right? Which means I can finally make this comparison I've been wanting to make. I wanted to make it in the last commentary, but it was it was actually sort of brownish in that level, if you remember. So basically, I look at this game, I look at this aesthetic, I look at these levels, which all look more or less the same, and I look at the suit now, and the picture is complete. This game is an homage to a music video from 2001. This game came out in 2003, so this is, that's confirmation enough in my mind. It is topical, man. Pulse by the Mad Capsule Markets, digital hardcore band from Japan has a music video for the song Pulse, which looks fucking exactly like this game. Like, the, the buildings, the interiors are all this, it's all pure white, the characters in it are wearing these pure white sort of mech future suits. And it looks fucking goddamn identical to this in my mind. And, I've convinced myself of that. And just as a point of reference, I will probably, hopefully remember to link it whenever I, I post this update in the Bad Games thread. Please do. By the way, word of warning before you click on that song. It's very loud. Yeah, <laughs> as have it... the genre digital hardcore might imply. Oh yes, the uh, the great what was it? Uh, what was the guy from uh, Atari Teenage Riot? That was a complete prick. Like you mean every member of Atari Teenage Riot? No, I think his name was like Alec <laughs> Empire. Yeah, I think you're right. I think you're spot on with that. I, I'm pretty sure all the members of Atari Teenage Riot were completely respectable, <laughs> annoying Euro trash. But I mean, who I'm who hasn't owned the Spawn soundtrack because that thing was fucking great, and heard the collaboration between Metallica and Atari Teenage Riot. Oh my God, that's actually a thing. You're. I forgot about that. I repressed that. Yeah, it it was right up there with uh, was a Judgment Night soundtrack where it combined like metal groups and hip hop, and that was like at least five years before quote unquote new metal. Rap metal, man, bring it back. Yeah, I think it had like Onyx and Biohazard. <laughs> so, two titans of their genres. <laughs> The dream collab yeah. that we've all been waiting for. And it, I mean, it was for fucking Judgment Night. I mean, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's about um, Emilio Estevez and who's the Jeremy Piven? 
and and they go to <laughs> another dream collab, if you will. Exactly. They they go to a boxing match, and on their way back, they end up taking a detour into the rough part of town. And since they're all like whitewashed, because Emilio Estevez and Jeremy Piven, <laughs> and they they run a, they run astray of the local gang, who, if I remember correctly. I'm wanting to say the local gang's leader was Dennis Leary. Oh boy. <laughs> so they are harassed through the night by Dennis Leary and his gang of thugs. Why don't you go ahead, when you're, when you're linking to that Mad, uh, Mad Capsule Market song, go ahead and link to this movie too. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like so many people miss out on not only great movie soundtracks, but also great movies. And that's what this LP is all about, because it's certainly not about this fucking boring game at this point. I think well, it is important, I, it is interesting to point out the fact that I think this is actually the first stage that has combined similar aesthetics from like two different stages. Like the first half was very similar to like yeah, the one you did commentary for. It was kind the of, brown level. Yeah, the brown dusty outdoor level. Now we're uh, back indoors with some white uh hospital this, this this looks sort of new too this room yeah the, particular this circle. this particular circle circular esque hallway is is definitely this new this cloud city room this is yeah it, fucking cloud city star wars pretty much without right down to the fucking smog outside just a smoggy ass cloud so you can see out the window i don't know if lando calrissian would have allowed smog cuz i mean billy d keeps a fucking straight house and I, I, I wish that so many people out there could see the Colt 45 ad where Billy D. Williams. Oh boy! <laughs> yeah, he's instructing you that this malt liquor will get women 100% uh, of the time, except it's more uh, urban because he says Colt 45 gets them every time. So it has much more of a ring to it than liquor is quicker. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty catchy. I don't know. Yeah, but yeah, that's a pretty hard one to tell. I, I, so th this particular room, we're assaulted by. I really wish I had looked up the name of these, but I don't care. Um, we're assaulted by a couple of them. Not really dangerous. I get. It would be if they had more of a area to fly in, but we're honestly a lot more nimble than they are in close quarters. And you were telling me something special about this room, too, about these next few rooms. Yeah, actually, uh, well, yeah, the, this this particular room is the game's attempt to set up a maze, but to some degree it just reminds me of a warehouse, so I was thinking of, like, a, a maze warehouse where all your corn needs are satisfied. <laughs> you used that joke before, but it's still funny to me. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a prime reason why I never, ever use humor. <laughs> I don't know, man. I kind of dig it. Yeah, I, I dig. I dig groaner puns. That's my. That's my dark, deep secret. Well, it's like I I pulled out a a comic gem at work recently, which was uh, what's the only bee that gives milk? I don't know, but I want to. A booby. <laughs> and I, I'm sitting there laughing like an idiot. Well. Like you are, guy. But um, yeah, and my coworker is just looking at me like I'm uh, like you're fucking crazy. Yeah, because I'm just sitting there going like, <laughs> and they're like, "What?" And they're, I'm like, mm, "Booby, mm, booby." Did you not get it? Uh, yeah, we did, dude. We got that back in fourth grade. And I'm like, "Well, excuse it's, me." It's a classic. I mean, I don't know. But yeah, it's, uh, you know, we're... Some people just don't appreciate puns. They don't. Especially the, the fine people at Something Awful. They hate puns, but I can understand. They don't find them punny. Yeah. That's, that's the best I got right now. It's the, the best I'm bringing to the table. They do find them punishable. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. but, um, I don't know. This, I, I will say that this is probably the longest episode that I'm going to do not really the longest mission per se because I've, I've for some reason that has still been the first level of the game which has spanned an amazing 21 rooms 
face. Yeah, I... And it's all down from there is the weird thing. Like, usually, you'd see them incrementally add rooms. Yeah, I think someone in the thread had kind of pointed out that they, for some reason, kind of front-loaded the game with suck. Like, they gave you the yeah. they give you the worst possible suit with the longest possible level with a bunch of annoying enemies you're not used to with no checkpoints. And you forgot to mention earlier that there were one hit kill enemies at the in one of the rooms in this level. Yeah, yeah, they well they had popped up before, like uh they were I think they're called like plasma cannons or some oh well, I'm sure there's some, you know, German tangerine word. Do we really do we have Capcom to thank for that bullshit being like so prevalent in these character action games now? Because I always thought it was Resident Evil 4 that was sort of the origin of that with the chainsaw guy, but this predates that by two years. Pretty much. I mean, you can always harken back to the actual, you know, 8-bit. Like Contra, NES, that bullshit. Yeah. But, you... like, those games where every enemy kills you in one hit, and then you see in these games, like, well, most enemies will just take a bit of health off, but then there's some that'll just one-hit you out of nowhere, cuz fuck you. Yeah, I, I guess I kind of assume that since they give you the benefit of the doubt of, like, a massive wind-up, that it's just kind of your fault if you don't get out of the way, but it's still... A massive annoyance to have to deal with that. Was there anything in that room that you just walked out of? Yeah, it was a, an exact copy with no enemies and some item pickups. Well, in a, in a store, but kind of a spoiler at this point. But if you notice my score, um, I have 27 continues. Yeah, I've, I've kind of grinded to hell, so everything is bought by this point that I can get. And I, I do want to point out, we still have three rooms left, but we're at a boss room. Hmm, that's curious. With a very similar cinematic. I'm... I'm getting some... Deja vu, I think? Wait a minute. This looks... The... Oh! The cutscene's so nice, we had to see it twice. It, oh. It's, uh, it's as good coming as it is going. Oh. Uh... Don't don't let they copied and pasted this fucking box. Don't <laughs> don't let the Lord split you where the door hit you. Or, I don't know. So, uh, but yeah, uh, it's it's the train again, trapped in. But tinted red this time. Yeah, it's kind of weird now thinking that did they construct an exact same railroad room in a different place? What is even the point of this train? Like, where does it go? It's, it's, if it's just for this room, is it to get, like, boxes from one side of the room to the other? Like, what's the maybe, point? Maybe the robots had invented a perpetual motion machine that has absolutely <laughs> fuck-all use. It's like, well, we've made a train that will never stop moving. But it can only move through this one room. Yeah. That we've built specifically for it. But, wow, that was lazy. That was really fucking lazy. Yeah. I, and now the boss is down. You go ahead, pick up the heart container, then take the teleport back to Gerudo Valley right there. So, well, beautiful. Yeah, sadly, that is not to be the case. As I don't know why I jumped out of there, but... <laughs> I don't know. It's it's at least a new cutscene, I guess. Also, I'm, I don't know. I don't remember that screen lasting that long, but... Yeah, we do find ourselves in yet another arena. It seems that Orchid 2 is not yet done, and instead has taken on a second, more dangerous scorpion form. But still the same name. It's, still, it's not like Orchid E2 V2. Yeah. It's just still Orchid E2. I, you know, I for some reason do not picture the Germans pronouncing it that way. Orchid E. But that is what, that's what it looks like. But, yeah, I guess I should explain the complex attack pattern of this boss before I slaughter it. Uh, it hops, and it shoots, uh, and Does it ever hop in the center of the ring, or does it just jump over you for no reason? It just hops over. It, it doesn't have the balls to face us. Well, it's another tough one. Yeah, well, it would be tough. If I didn't have an ability that would drain a third of its health every time I use it, so. Or if you were like most people who played and enjoyed this game who only play with one hand. Also, please stop spinning in place. I'm getting motion sick. Well, I, not, I, not wanted, I wanted to take in the grandeur of this well-thought-out room that they decided to not allow you to use at all. 
It's kind of weird how big this room is. It really is. And speaking of weird, what the hell is this thing? You mean a thing bouncing on the back of your neck while you're standing still? I don't know. Well, that's her handle. The mystery to me. What is this? What's going on? She is identical. Who's voice acting in this game? Fate. That, I is think that's it. Of I think that's... This is... Well... Hold on, hold on, hold on. Her. That line doesn't have an accent for some reason. Everything else is like, is she a clone of me? Or, like, I can't do a German accent. But that last line is this pure, straight, unbroken, unaccented English. Well, they, they only had the voice actress for a good half hour. And she flubbed up one line, so they just got in a random temp. <laughs> Another girl. Yeah. Another intern. I'm, sh I'm sure the credits of this game will have, like, three different people listed for Vanessa's voice actress. But, so, we get some... Very vague, cryptic words from the client. So we find a clone of ourselves. We don't remember being cloned so much. Hey, it's still alive, but oh no, now there's a time limit. Otherwise, Ridley will take the Metroid to the <laughs> Phantom Zone. You can't just break the clone out of the glass. I mean, she is alive. No, that, that would clearly take effort that we don't have with our hand blast. And time that is so precious at this point. It is, well... I mean, we have to get to an energy pod at some undisclosed location. Apparently, she did light up these doors to be green, though that's kind of lost beneath the alarm. Oh, so she can hack into this place? Pretty much. She can control, like, their, like, electrical systems? Why didn't she turn off the self-destruct, then, if she has access to, like, their mainframe or however computers work? Isn't that, like, just, like, two or three keystrokes away from disable self-destruct, release clone? Check, check, and don't worry about it, kiddo. I guess that goes in the whole uh, deeper plot storyline that's not in the game. <laughs> I don't know. The one thing that's kind of bothering me now that I'm watching this again is that, well, clearly there are alarm, like visual alarms going off, like the rotating colors, right? But there's right. there's no light source. Like we oh no now you mention it's all I could think about yeah we <laughs> we've been running down these hallways and I was thinking of like well obviously we can't see the fucking green doors because there's the stupid orange circling lights but they don't have a point of origin there's just kind of this weird circling orange non-entity light source look it's the future they figured it out okay. Oh. That's all That's all you need. That's all the logic you need. That makes sense. Also, the, the, they do try to give you some... I, I don't know, sense of tension. Really, though, you do have plenty of time to get back because you don't have to go all the way back to the start of the stage. Really? It's like the halfway point, right? It's not even that. It's, it's really like four rooms back. This is probably the most difficult room for the mere fact that you do have to defeat all of the enemies in this room before you can leave. And yet again, I'm just trying to like jump around because otherwise I think you have to run all the way around to trigger that enemy. So it's a lot better just to try to jump over and hit its trigger point through the wall or something. That's a trick you picked up from the speed run, right? Yeah, I gotta, I gotta... Which, which you watched religiously. I gotta... Studied for hours. Yeah, there's a TAS somewhere where somebody just smashes this game with a hammer and says, No! <laughs> That's the quickest way to beat it, with a hammer. The quickest way to win is to not play. So That's the only winning move, in fact. So, so says uh, Sun Tzu, the art of PN03. Hey, yeah, I, it's one of his lesser known... <laughs> books, as a matter of fact. Yeah, he had a weird collection of fan fiction and those shoujins, or whatever the fan... <laughs> I know, I'm gonna say, keep saying these fucking Japanese words that I can't say. Please do. But yeah, that is, that's the end of that terrifying stage. It actually got a high rank for some reason, but I want to thank uh, Haberman yet again. You're welcome. Bye.